Thank you. Appreciate y'all letting me come today. Um, as James mentioned, I'm here to talk about the US 75 uh, North Haven project. And I just only have about 800 pictures and should only take about two hours. So uh, we'll try to get through this as quickly as we can. OK, um, so any as those of y'all that have been to a tech stop presentation, we always like to start with a safety minute. And I'm sure most of y'all are familiar with our hashtag in the street campaign. Um, the last, so so we're on the street. We're trying to end the streak of daily deaths on Tech Stop roadways and Texas roadways overall. The last deathless day on a Tech Stop roadway was actually over 23 years ago. Now it was on November 7th, 2000. Uh, so we have this campaign really for please spread the word to friends and family and colleagues. Um, we're asking all our designers, consultants, contractors to help us end the streak. All right, so I'm going to kind of give a, a brief project overview first, and then I'm really going to kind of drill down into the arch bridge erection itself. That's going to be the primary component of the presentation. Um, but the project overall, the US 75 North Haven Trail project, it's located obviously over US 75, just south of 635 between Forest and Royal, that, those of you that are familiar with the area. Uh, the limits of the trail project was from North Haven Road on the west side to the White Rock Creek Trail and Cottonwood Trail on the east side is where we tied it, tied in the trail. Um, and it can, we actually constructed two bridges with the project and the approaches for those two bridges. And the total length of the project was about half a mile of trail. So here's a quick video, kind of gives a good overview um, of the project. So this is a, an early rendering that was done, but I think it gives kind of a good quick overview of the, the trail that we built. And we all, there's the second bridge there that we built over White Rock Creek. This was, a, again, a rendering. The completed bridge is slightly different. And that's where we tied in the trail to the existing Cottonwood Trail. And here's kind of a, I guess, on the ground rendering view, walking across 75. And surprisingly, it looks, if you go out there today, it looks almost nearly the exact same as the rendering. All right. So project overview, as I mentioned, it is two bridges. The US 75 crossing, I'll refer to it as the arch bridge as we go in through the presentation. We did have also the White Rock Creek crossing. In my mind, that's kind of the unsung hero of the project. Without that bridge, we couldn't have the project either. And it didn't cause any stress or drama. But, you know, nobody really wants to hear about that. But I did include one picture there on the bottom right of that bridge. And it was a just 470 foot bridge just on uh, standard TX-28, the typical TxDOT pre-stressed concrete girders. It also included retaining walls in the project, storm sewer drainage, obviously the sidewalk and trail, and then we did do some lighting as well. So a little bit on the project history. Uh, there was a lot of agencies involved in the creation of this project. Uh, it dates back to about 2017. There was extensive coordination between all of these agencies, you have Dallas County, the city of Dallas, Dallas Parks and Rec, you have North Central Texas Council of Governments. The Friends of the North Haven Trail were a huge asset in this project, as well as FHWA. So a brief design interview, uh, design overview. Um, the designer and engineer record is H&TB. Uh, here's, here's again is some of the early renderings. I think that hand-drawn thing is actually something James drew, I believe. Um, so some pretty neat, you know, a lot of neat discussions back then to really create the project and refine the scope. Um, the design lasted from about 2017 to 2020, and the ps &E was from about 2019, and I think wrapped up the end of 2020. 
so a bit on the construction. Uh, the project led in February of 2021. There actually were eight bidders on this, so it was pretty healthy competition. Uh, the awarded contractor was Regal Construction. The bid amount was about 9.3 million. Uh, the inspection was done in house by my area office staff, and we also also had H and T B involved uh, with the arch uh, construction shop drawing reviews. We started the project in June 2021, and we are currently working on the final punch list. So now on to the arch itself. So it, I'm told it's the only doubly curved network tied arch bridge in the world. Um, it has it's it spans about 201 feet over the US 75 main lanes. There are 62 cables total that kind of crisscross. These are a couple of screenshots from the plans. Um, and on this bridge, it's a 860 foot bridge total. And 14 of those other spans are actually just standard text dot pre-stressed TX28s. So that's the loop ramp and then the east side tying down between the office building and the Sherwin Williams that I'll show here in a minute. Um, so the cable arrangement was both aesthetically pleasing, but also was a very important structural aspect of the project. It may it allowed the, the structure to be much more efficient and resilient in order for us to actually move it. So we could essentially build it and then move it into its final spot. Um, and that it actually reduces the bending moments and the deflections significantly. But uh, I'm not a structural engineer, so I'm not going to get into the details of that. <clears throat> and onto the, the deck itself, it's a corrugated metal deck, as you can see on the bottom left picture, and then it had a variable depth uh, concrete deck on top of that uh, cast in place. It was post tensioned as well. And you can you can't really see the details, but it's essentially 11 inches thick on the outer uh, tie girder. So that's how thin this deck is, 11 inches from the bottom of the beam to the top of the deck. In the center, it's it's slightly thicker just due to the crown on the roadway. Uh, but running down the sides of the bridge are the curved longitudinal tie girders, and then it has floor beams uh, spaced periodically, transversely. And there on the bottom left, you can kind of see that connection between the one of the floor beams and the tie girders as well as that metal deck. Um, and then the bottom right, you can see this is a picture from uh, King Fabrication where the fabricators, there's a picture of the kind of the mock-up, the dry run as they were assembling all the pieces down in Houston prior to unbolting and then shipping each component separately up to the project. So in January of 2023, or yeah, 2023, early this year, we did pour that deck of the bridge. Um, Behind the cons building on the east side of US 75, there's a shopping center with studio movie grill and uh, we actually built it off site behind that building. Um, here's a picture on the left, those that can see it of the, the deck pour itself and you can see those post tension uh, ducts running out of the end of that uh, floor being there on the end. So then on the top right, that was a picture from uh, the camera we had on the back of the cons building to kind of watch progress but that was in I think that was in February when we had one of the snowstorms so it kind of sat through the snowstorm then sat through the spring um, while we worked on the final erection plans and, and design <clears throat> so each as I mentioned each of the components was shipped separately to the site and then bolted on site uh, so here's some of the arch pieces sitting next to the deck itself um, and Regal used the different forms of shoring to kind of hold that up to bolt them in place um, before the final lift to put all the pieces of the arch together. So then in June of 2023 was when we erected the arch pieces itself and assembled the arch and the cables. So here's some pretty cool pictures. Um, they used four cranes total to lift the different components and, and bolt them in the air uh, with man lifts and, and the cranes. Um, and on the bottom right, it's kind of hard to set, see, but this was when we were pulling all the cables and tensioning all the cables more or less to the final configuration. Basically, we put all the 62 cables up, they tensioned them, we checked them, HTB checked them, and you know we said, yeah, it's good to go, we're ready to move the actual bridge. So then we were ready for the move. Here's kind of a picture in the middle. That's all the cables are up. They were doing the final tuning. Here's how the 
75 crossing looked on the left. The loop ramp was all complete. You can kind of see on the bottom left where the this bridge is going to go at a slight skew across US 75. And then there behind the cons building, you can see the bridge sitting um, and you can sort of see 75 to the top of that bottom right picture. And here's a video my public information office put together. I'll kind of play it. It's a Years nice of overview. Months of building and in a single night, this one of a kind art structure was placed in its new home. This is how TxDOT raised a bridge and the bar for construction in Dallas with the North Haven Trail Pedestrian Bridge. The Dallas Metroplex is one of the fastest growing regions in the country, bringing in more jobs, companies, and people. With the new buildings and homes, the desire for recreation and green space are top of mind for residents. Regional trail systems provide areas to walk, run, and bike with nature in urban areas. In the area around US 75 and Royal Lane, three regional trail systems are adjacent to the highway. The North Haven, White Rock Creek, and Cottonwood Creek Trails. But going from one trail to the other was no easy feat. That's when a connection plan and a partnership came together. It's been a long time coming. First, a shout out has to go to TxDOT. This is a really critical project for the regional bicycle pedestrian network. Second shout out goes to the actual engineering and the construction company. The third shout out uh, that I'd like to uh, have really goes out to the city of Dallas. And then lastly, to the Regional Transportation Council. Um, I think the Regional Transportation Council should fund those really hard and missing pieces uh, in transportation in the region. And this clearly is a hard missing piece that I hopefully, uh, hopefully the community will use for the next hundred years. The crown jewel of this new project, a 201 foot long pedestrian bridge spanning all lanes of the highway below. The white arch towering 50 feet tall. This is the only known network tied arch bridge in the world with a doubly curved deck. The 64 steel cables networked across the bridge, just like the string in an archer's bow, giving it the strength to carry 445,000 pounds. Fun fact, that's the equivalent of six fully loaded semi-trucks or the weight of 45 elephants. With more than 235,000 vehicles per day in this busy highway quarter, causing daily disruptions to traffic to build the bridge was not an option. Designers with HNTV came up with a bold plan to piece the deck and arch together in an adjacent parking lot and then move the entire structure into place. As a bridge engineer, it's really exciting to be a part of a project like this because it's what we call structural art. It is both elegant and efficient. Uh, those cables being crisscrossed the way they are is intentional. It's not just beautiful. Uh, the crisscross allows the structure to be more rigid and reduces the forces by a magnitude of 10, allowing us to make the arch extremely thin and the deck extremely thin, resulting in a beautiful structure. Once assembled on site, TxDOT and crews from the contractor Regal went over every inch of the move plan again and again. The slightest misstep could derail the bridge plans. Finally, on one Saturday night in September 2023, it was time. The first true test of the specialized equipment, moving the bridge 1,200 feet through the parking lot to the frontage road, and it was a success. Next, the highway was closed and traffic detoured, allowing an open path for crews to use self-propelled movers to swing the bridge 45 degrees across the highway lanes from the east side to the west. As Don broke a gantry system and hydraulic lifts moved the bridge up and over and exactly into the final spot on the column. 20 hours after the move began, the bridge was in its new home in the Texas sunshine. It takes a lot of people working together. You know, we can't all, you can't have tunnel vision. You gotta kind of see the bigger picture to understand that it, you know, a night like this is, Sort of like ripping the Band-Aid off, you know, we've got to close the, the main lanes down. We've got to close the highway down, but it's, it's for the, a good purpose of getting the bridge in place. Now trail users have more options on which path to take and an amazing view from above. For drivers below, the arch is now a gateway landmark for the North Dallas community. A vision that's now a reality. years of planning.
All right, now just about an hour and a half left of the presentation to go. Um, now I'm going to get into kind of the detail, the direction. You kind of saw some of the video how it happened. This was a cool graphic. Our my one of my graphic uh, designers put together, kind of showing the overall move. There on the top right, there's the bridges in blue. That behind that shopping building, there's where it was uh, put together. The bridge was assembled back there on shoring towers or shoring stacks, and then it was put on self-propelled modular transfer units, or I'll, I'll just call them SPMTs as we move forward. Um, but then we rolled it across to the other parking lot, that office building there. It's It sat overnight next to the office building. And then Saturday night in September, we uh, rolled it across the northbound frontage road, kind of swung it to the north so that we could maintain traffic on the northbound main lanes while we were doing this. And then once we were ready, we closed down the main lanes, put all the traffic on the frontage roads, and then we swung it back to the west, uh, put it on the gantry system. That bottom right is one of the gantry units. It was a series of four, four hydraulic jacks that sat on a rail system. And then they had beams connecting them um, together. And then there was a header beam that I'll, I'll get to, but that essentially lifted the beam, the bridge up on either side and the rail system was able to slide over the bents and lower it in the final configuration. So here is the bridge. This was right when we were ready to move. Uh, the left side there, you can see those SPMTs um, in it. You can see the bridge sitting on those SPMTs, so it had already been taken off the shoring. We did have to put a lifting beam on it. That's the end of the bridge on top there. You can see that beam running across that was bolted. Uh, to the arch knuckle on both sides, and that's essentially what that gantry system is going to lift from there. Um, the, the right side, you can see one of those hydraulic lifts on the gantry rail system there, out there between, or uh, already out there between the northbound frontage road and northbound main lanes as we got ready for the move. So here's a couple more pictures as we, the first move Friday afternoon in September, we had to roll this bridge around the office build uh, this shopping center which you know i'd never moved a bridge around a building before that was pretty unique experience uh kind of hairy you know you want to make sure you're not going to hit this building but uh here's some cool pictures that we took as as the roll was happening and here's a video just kind of shows roughly how fast those spmts move But it, they move about one mile an hour, so it was actually faster than I thought. But considering we only had to move this, I think 1,200 feet, you know, it's really not too bad. And then there's a picture on the left kind of showing us swing around the building. It did get awful close, and then the right, we made it around the building and we're working towards that office, office building parking lot. And here's a kind of a time lapse shot underneath it as it went around the building. And those guys operating the SPMTs stand behind them with kind of a controller, essentially. And they had one employee at each of the SPMTs, you know, using a controller like a video game, essentially, to roll those things. So here's a the left there is another picture showing how close it got. And then we had made it that center pictures. We made it across the trail and we we're in that next adjacent parking lot. And then the, the right there, that's where it sat overnight Friday night, right next to that office building between the trail and the office building. And we did have a storm roll through that night. It, I woke up at like 3 a.m. worried about the bridge, but luckily everything was fine. Um, and here's a couple of cool pictures from the drone footage uh, of the bridge rolling through that parking lot and then sitting sitting there on the between the trail and the office building. And here's another photo of kind of from the other angle. You can see kind of the move the next night that's going to occur across US 75 there. All right, so then starting Saturday night, we I think it was about 8 p.m. We shut down the northbound frontage road 
and we had to build a pad across that frontage road with crane mats and some you know dirt and some plates and whatnot um, in order for those SPMTs to roll across it onto the northbound main lanes. And that right picture, you can see the stripe there. That's actually the northbound frontage road sitting on those ties. So those SPMTs are really pretty incredible. Each of those axles operates independently, so it can go over things like curbs and whatnot and not affect the overall grade or elevation. Um, with, you know, so the bridge itself was not moving up and down. It was purely the SPMTs. Uh, so Mammut is, this is the company that did it. That, that's pretty much what they specialize in using these SPMTs. And it, it is a, it, it's more or less a means and methods type of thing, but we have, you know, that they do use it. We used it a while back in Irving for a bridge there several years ago. Uh, they use a lot of large, move a lot of large things like, you know, electric generators, things like that with these type of SBMTs. And then here's the back side of the bridge on the left there, getting over the northbound front of the road. And you can see we're starting to swing the bridge to the north. In the center there, that's a picture on the, the shoulder of the northbound main lanes. And so while we were doing this, we had traffic over to the le two left lanes of northbound 75. And there on the right, it's a picture looking back towards traffic. You can see traffic in those, those inside lanes. So then once we made it across that northbound front of the road and the bridge was swung more or less, to the north, uh, they were able. The bottom left there, you can kind of see the at the very bottom of the picture that forklift starting to pick up those ties. They had to pick all that, take that pad out over the northbound frontage road, so then we could put traffic on it, so we could shut down the northbound main lanes. And there on the right, you can see the traffic there on the two left lanes. Um, and this, you know, we did have follow traffic control plans with this. There are about a hundred TMAs behind the picture, you know, just lining just about everything. Uh, but it did work pretty well. Obviously, traffic was going very, very slowly, which is, you know, helpful for us as when we're out there doing it. So then about midnight uh, Saturday, I guess Sunday morning, whatever you want to call it, we shut down the, the main lanes. Um, there on the right is a picture of me standing on the northbound main lanes. It's a very weird feeling to standing out in the middle of the main lanes with no traffic on it because you, you feel like you got to keep your head on a swivel. Uh, so we closed it down in order to then swing the bridge back to the west, to the south and to the west um, in order to, to set it on the final bent locations. So in order to swing it through the main lanes, we had to remove a section of the, the median on US 75. Y'all can probably recognize those, the landscaping there that runs all down the center of US 75. So they removed a section of median, had to get it more or less flush in order for those SPMTs to roll across it. We actually had some rebar still sticking out. They had to grind flush kind of in a hurry as we were doing this to make sure it didn't puncture a tire. Uh, here's a video of it kind of, it took them a little, a little tinkering with it to get it through the median, but this is just a real quick video. That's about the speed it went in, in real life. So then once we made it through the median, we could con continue swinging it back to the south. Um, so there it is making it through and and we still had traffic on the all on the front of roads at this point. And as the bridge was moving, um, it was still low as on those SPMTs. So it looked kind of odd, like, are we going to have enough vertical clearance under this thing? Um, but luckily, you know, traffic control did its job. We didn't have anybody drive through the lane closures or anything. It all worked out well. So there on the right, you can see it's still on the SPMTs. But it is between those those uh, the gantry lifts. So in a minute, what what they did was, uh, I guess I can go to that picture. The next thing they had to do was use some cranes to to fly in the. There on the left to fly in that gantry beam, 
that's essentially uh, there on the right. They put that on top of those two grant two gantries, and that's how they lift the bridge off of the SPMTs on the right. So they we lifted it off the SPMTs. They roll the SPMTs out, and then they connect that rail system that ties the gantries together. We can't have the rail there now because the SPMT has to be there. So it's kind of a a sequence of of events that had to happen. And then so there on the left now it's, the SPMTs are gone. That rail system is is all in place. So now the bridge is more or less ready to be jacked up and then slid over over the top of the bent caps. So then it can be lowered in place. There on the right, there's a kind of a good drone picture. Um, see all the traffic on the frontage road there, the northbound frontage road back to past Royal. Um, and this was Sunday morning at this point. So then the, the gantries slid it on the rail over the bent caps on both sides. And then at this point, they were able to fine tune, lowering it down and making sure, you know, they got on the, the bearing pads appropriately. So here's kind of where the bridge sat um, Sunday afternoon, early afternoon. We, we uh, finished about noon setting the bridge. Um, so we were able to get the northbound main lanes opened up. It was about noon or 1 p.m. and the southbound main lanes it was about 3 p.m. that we were able to get it open. Uh, so in total it was the northbound main lanes were closed from about midnight to noon and then southbound was closed from about midnight to 3 p.m. Sunday afternoon. So here's a cool time lapse of the whole move from HNTB. That'll kind of show you the whole process I just walked you all through. Here it is going around that building. And then there's that northbound frontage road crossing that they're building right now. And you can see the rail system of the gantry is not there yet, so they could drive that the SPMTs through it. And then start swinging the bridge to the north. Get that east side of the bridge through. Then we close the main lanes down, then we start swinging it through the median. And then you can see they use a the crane to then get the other gantry jacks in place. Put that lifting beam on top of the gantries, lift the bridge up, roll the SPMTs out, get that rail, the rail system put in place. And then jack the bridge up. and start sliding it on the rails. Then lowered in place. We did tack weld the, the bearing seats just temporarily in order to get traffic back open. We did also test the tension of the cables just to make sure everything was good before we made the call to open the, the main lanes up with live traffic underneath. So that was the completion of the arch bridge and then if you all notice we did have to still build the other two spans either side of that because that's where that gantry system had to slide it over the bent caps so then after september through october november i guess it was october actually we built these last two spans of the bridge on those tx28 girders we poured those sections of bridge And the, and now we're substantially complete, and the trail is is open. So the this is a picture on the left side from the west loop ramp side, and then a picture from down on US 75. And then City of Dallas, we did have the official ribbon cutting two weekend, I guess, yeah, two weekends ago now. Uh, so the trail is officially open. That's all I have for today. Appreciate y'all's time. So that was extremely great. So now is a time to ask questions. Well, we have We've questions. got a ton of them. So. Can you talk a little bit about the uh, the vehicle that tried to go over the bridge and what you guys are doing to keep that from happening again? Yeah, so it, it was slightly misleading. You know how social media is. We didn't actually have a vehicle on the bridge. We do have bollards on either side of the bridge, so a vehicle can't get on the bridge. 
Uh, it did get up one of the sections of the retaining wall, so we are actually working on adding additional bollards. Hi. Um, what is the clearance underneath uh, the bridge over 75? It's a little bit over 20 feet, so it is, you know, oh, it's it is more than even need, we don't even need a, a clearance sign on it. You you are not going to have a... We are, no, it's over the minimum, so okay. we don't need to have Thank a you. clearance sign. And we did check that just to be sure before we opened it up to traffic. Hi, when you bid the job, did you specify the method of putting the bridge over there? So we did show in the plans to use SPMTs and we gave them a time frame, you know, from midnight Saturday through Sunday to be able to do it. So we had to put those constraints on it uh, and then we kind of left it up to their means and methods of how they're actually going to do it. Our PSNE actually showed to build the bridge between the northbound frontage road and northbound main lanes in that media, the kind of a median area. Our contractor actually talked to that property owner and came to us and said, hey, we got the permission to build it behind the shopping center. And we said, well, as long as we can get it through the parking lot, we're on board with that. And it actually, I think, worked out pretty well where we did it. How's your, um, how's the bridge anchored to the uh, bent cap? So it has welded uh, bearing seats, but then, you know, otherwise it's it's bearing pads. And there is a retainer pin on that center. It, it looked kind of, it, it's weird. There's three, there's two outer bearing seats and there's a retainer cap in the middle that has a pin that kind of sits on the donut plate. So it gives, it's kind of a sheer key type of deal. Um, is that right, Kira? Did I butcher that? Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's on more or less normal bearing pad type Got of it. scenario. Okay, thank you. All right, just one more. I saw a hand over the way. Two questions, short questions. So when you moved it over, how were you off a little bit from your measurements and, and what was in place or did were you reasonable? No, it was it was I mean, we we had our contractor double and triple check all the survey before we did it, you know, make sure our bent caps in the right spot, all the bearing seats were sitting right. So it, it worked out. We didn't have any major issues. You know, we had some minor deals, equipment breakdowns and whatnot while we were doing the move. So, uh, what, but uh, as far as lining up, luckily we didn't get out there and it was a foot short or anything, you know. <laughs> <laughs> luckily. So uh, what extra loading did you put in place for the move? What extra what? What extra loading and design did you put in place for the move? So I think that was kind of, in, as I mentioned, the cable system itself kind of created a more resilient and flexible structure um, with the post tensioning of the deck and the cable system. Um, so I don't know, Kira, if you have anything to add to that. To yeah. The way they ended up moving it, they're actually supporting it at the final bearing locations. So it basically acted like it would in its final condition. Yeah, the, our, our ps &E actually showed a different method of, of doing it with some self racing, which would, they did, our, our contractor did start with that method originally, but then they came up with putting those lifting beams on the arch knuckles themselves. So it's more or less lifting from the final bearing location so that then they're you know it's more or less in its final condition as we moved it as far yeah, as loading everything goes was modeled for all the, the loading conditions as well we went through about two years of erection shop drawings to make sure this was going to work during construction all right 